How's it going guys, it is Venom Surge here and welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Online. This is a series where we check out individual sets from a game and they tend to be not as commonly used. Today's set is Expulsive Rebuke. This is a heavy armor set that you can get from Vadishron Arena. If there's any other sets that you guys would like me to check out in the future, just leave it down in the comments by the way. So this set gives us max stam, max health, weapon and spell damage. Then when you block, you place a bomb on the enemy for 10 seconds. When they're hit with a fully charged heavy attack, which I don't believe it has to be yours, it doesn't say yours, it just says when they're hit by it, they deal 7k damage, flame damage to all enemies, and apply the burning effect. This can occur every 8 seconds and scales off of our resistances. Since it's based off of the resistance, I figured let's make this a tank build, especially since it's already heavy. So I have paired this with Plague Doctor, which it just gives us max health four days. This is dropped in Deshaun, you can get it overworld, just farm up the public dungeon and a couple world bosses, or you can just buy it off of the traders. We are also using a one hand axe and shield, and then a ice staff for the back bar. For the monster set, we are using Swarm Mother. This is dropped in Vet Spindle Clutch 1. This gives us max stam, max mag, then for the two piece, when you block an enemy that is between 8 and 22 meters, you pull them in. It can occur every second. So this is very nice for pulling people together. And it's also when you block, which we should be blocking to activate our explosive rebuke. And it just helps you survive as a tank. For the traits, we are doing infused on the big pieces and sturdy on the small pieces here. On the jewelry, we are doing healthy with mag recovery. And then on the weapon, we're doing life drain with defending, shield, max stam, and reinforced, and the ice staff infused crusher. For our stats, here is us unbuffed. Here's what we look like buffed. I'm just going to let you guys pause it there so that way you guys can read it if you want. I'm not going to take the time to go over it since you guys can just see it on screen. We did do 64 attributes into max health and we are using the Lady Munda Stone. Now as far as the Munda Stones go, we are currently just over cap when we're buffed. So if you use something else other than Plague Doctor that gives them armor, you could do the Atronach, well, that would be the best thing I would recommend, it's just to get more mag recovery, because we do use a lot of mag skills. Or you could use the Lord to increase your health even further if you would like. For our consumables, I am using Jewels of Misrule for the current food. It gives stamina mag recovery and max health by 4k, this is very nice. If you don't need that stam recovery, you can do Orzaga's Red Frothgar. This gives you even more max health, and then it also gives you mag recovery. If you don't care about the health but you still need stam recovery, you could do Rosy Disposition Tonic. This will give you both of the pools for recovery but no health. For a potion, we're just using a normal tri-stat potion. For our skills, in the Sword and Board tree, we are using Heroic Slash. This applies Minor Maim to the enemy and you gain Minor Heroism. That's the main reason why I use this. You gain ultimate like crazy over time with this thing. Next up in the Draconic Power skill tree, we are using Green Dragon Blood. This is a manual heal, but here's the tricky part. This heals you for 33% of your missing health. So if you're missing 30k out of our 55k health, you're going to get 10k back. If you are missing only 5k health, you're not going to get 10k back. That's not... We're not doing 33% of our max health, it's of our missing. So if you're missing 5k, you're only going to get like 1 to 2k healing back. So it is not worth it to use when you're barely hurt. This also gives us major fortitude, major endurance, and minor vitality. Back into the sword and board tree, we are using defensive stance. This is a ward that absorbs 17k damage. The higher health you get, the more this can block, so that's where the Lord Mundestone could help. You also reflect the next harmful direct damage projectile. And then while you have a shield equipped, which we do, you, you increase the amount of damage you can block by 10% and the cost of blocking by 10%. Next up in the Earth and Heart skill line, we are using another shield. This is mag based though. 
First of all, everybody around you for your allies get 5k shield and then you get a 12k shield. You also get major mending for 3 seconds. Back into the sword and board tree, we're using pierce armor. This is your taunt for 15 seconds, and it applies major and minor breach to the enemy, plus our crusher, so there's a lot of resistances that we're stripping off the enemy. Our front bar ulti, you can do a couple of options. So I'm currently using ferocious leap. This does 9k flame damage, knocks back everybody, and stuns them for two seconds. And then you gain a whopping shield of 57k damage. That is a massive shield for six seconds. Now, Magma Shell is also a pretty awesome ulti, especially if you're doing content that's like one-shotting you. This will reduces your damage taken by 3% of your max health. So what could have been 9 million damage is now only going to be 3% of your health. The issue is when you have a boss that is attacking extremely fast, which tends to be those wind aegis type people with the four arms that spin this doesn't really help as much it's mainly for those big incoming hits you also do 700 flame damage every second and nearby allies get a shield that absorbs 100 percent of their max health for 12 seconds so that's very nice on the back bar we are going back into the earth and heart and we are using ignatius weapons when you hit this everybody around you for 36 meters gains major brutality and sorcery for 54 seconds which is massively long you barely need to think about this it's very much worth it into the destruction staff we are using elemental blockade specifically this morph since it's bigger and lasts longer does I don't care about the damage what we care about is first of all it gives you a 15k shield against projectiles but it applies chilled to enemies and if they're chilled they also become frozen and immobilized for four seconds so this is great for activating your enchant and for immobilizing people now here's another select spot in the heavy armor tree you have to have five pieces of armor heavy armor equipped you gain major resolve for 20 seconds. While it is active, you also reduce the cost of break free by 25%, and you gain immunity to knockback and disabling effects for six seconds when you first activate this. But for that first seconds, your movement speed is reduced by 65%. Main reason why we use this and not hardened armor from Draconic Power is this is mag based, this is stam based. Now if you don't like that slowness, hardened armor is a good option. You still get major resolve for 20 seconds and you actually get a 14k shield which is also nice. I'll just pop this right after a boss fight. I may not be buffed in the first hit, but I'm not slow when it matters. Down into the undaunted skill line, we are using inner beast. This is a long range taunt and while we don't do much damage, the enemy will take 10% more damage from you, and then allies can do a synergy to do more damage to the enemies. Up into the Fighter's Guild, we are using Silver Leash just to help pull into more enemies. Now because we are using Swarm Mother, what that already pulls people in, you could get rid of Silver Leash and instead slot in something that will immobilize people, so like Choking Talons. That would be a better option, however, sometimes the Swarm Mother may not grab people that I want it to. So I like using this to ensure the main priority targets are being pulled in first. But generally, this would be better to slot, but it is mag-based and expensive. Be careful where you use it. For our main ulti in the Ardent Flame skill line, we are using Standard of Might. This does 2.4k flame damage and applies Major Defile to everybody. If you're standing in it, you get 15% damage done and damage reduced taken. An ally can also do some extra synergies to immobilize people. Now, another option in the assault line, you could do aggressive horn. This increases your max smag and max stam for everybody around you by 10% and more importantly, everybody gets major force for 10 seconds. Now into the CP. Green CP, nothing really matters, get more movement speed outside of combat, get your in chance to have a chance to not even be used, reduce fall damage taken, increase the quality of items that you find in chests, 
increase your mount speed, make your mount not use stamina outside of combat. In the blue tree, get the passes when you can. Nothing in here matters. Crit chance doesn't matter. These two are nice, but I would just go straight down here as soon as you can. First, we're going into staving death and get ironclad. The majority of attacks are direct damage in PvE and tend to be in PvP, so that's very good. If you are in PvP, I would also consider getting crit resist. I also got unassailable. This will make AoE attacks do less. PvP, there's a lot of AoE, and bosses tend to have some AoEs in there too. Duelist rebuff reduces single target attacks. When you're fighting a lot of adds, they tend to just do single target attacks, so this will make all their light attacks do less. We're gonna come down here. This is the annoying thing. You gotta do 250s. One of them have to be maxed out, because we want this. You deal 1k magic damage to the attackers whenever they attack you with a direct damage attack. It scales off of your max health, and this can apply your weapon enchants. So if you're on your back bar and they happen to hit you, you can apply Crusher to them, even if it's a long-ranged attack. In the red tree, we're getting more armor, more max health. We are also getting slippery. This will make it so that way you automatically break free every 21 seconds. Now, if you don't want this, there are some options over here. You could do some blocking passes. I also really like Ward Master. I, I love wards if you guys can't tell, so I would also do like Shield Master or Bastion, but that's what I'm running with right now. And then Survival Instincts is very major, it makes all of your roll dodging, break free, sprint, and block just cost 25% less. For our passes, I'm just going to go over the things that are important to us. Normally this wouldn't apply to us that often, but because our main set applies the burning effect guaranteed. Combustion is very nice, increases the damage of your burning by 50%, and then when you apply that debuff, you restore 1k magicka. Searing Heat is also very nice, this will increase the size of our ulti specifically, since we, that's the only thing we actually use from here, by 4 seconds. Iron Skin, get this as soon as possible, increases your block damage. Burning Heart, also get this, this increases your healing when stuff is active. Elder Dragon's also nice. When we're on our front bar, you get 10% heal health recovery, and then all of your melee stuff lo is longer reach by 2 meters. Skilled Armor, also very nice, gives us more resistance. Get Eternal Mountain, this increases your duration by 20%. That's how this thing can last for freaking 54 seconds. Battle Roar is probably one of the best passives on the Dragon Knight. This is the first passive as soon as you possibly can get. When you do an ulti, you restore basically 50 resources per point of the ulti. Our main ulti does 235 ultimate. You guys should be able to see my calculator, but in case you can't, that's 11,750 resources that you restore when you hit your ulti. Mountain's Blessing is also pretty major. When you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you and your group gain minor brutality and you can generate three ultimate. So that means not only do we get all these buffs when you pop this, but you also get minor brutality. So specifically people who are using weapon damaged focus builds, they are going to get even more damage. In the one hand and shield, get fortress. This helps with your blocking. Sword and board is nice for the amount of damage you can block. Bash does not matter as much, but the 40% cost reduction is nice for bosses. Deflect Bolts is also nice that it helps against ranged enemies. Battlefield mobility won't happen that often, but if you do happen to be moving around while blocking, this helps a lot. In the Destruction Staff, the only thing that really matters is getting Ancient Knowledge. This will allow you to block easier with your staff. And then try focus, which will make your ice staff cost magicka when you block instead of stam. So if you are on your front bar and you're running out of stam, because here's the thing, when you are blocking, recovery is disabled. Look at my stam, it's not going up. If you're staying like this for long enough and you don't get stam back, first of all, you can use potions, that does help. Then you could swap to your back bar and use mag to block. So that's gonna help out a lot. 
in our heavy armor get everything. Everything in here matters. Increases your resistances, health recovery, stuff you restore when you take damage, max health, the amount of resources you gain back 28% increased. That is major when you heavy attack. Healing received as well. We are an Imperial. This will increase your gold gain by 1%. Gives you 2k max health, 2k max stam, and then all of your abilities cost 6% less. Another good option if you guys don't have that DLC is a Nord. They give you resistances, health, and ulti regeneration when you take damage. In the alchemy line, get medicinal use. This makes your potions last 100% uptime. So, this is a tank. Most of our stuff, however, is actually very long duration, so we keep up our buffs. These three buffs here are the main ones that you need to focus on keeping up. They will help you survive, but they're all like, this one's 20 seconds, this one's 24 seconds, this is freaking 54 seconds. Easy to keep up. Wall of Elements reduces people's damage. Keep that up. Your poke is your taunt and tons of resistance debuff. Keep that up. Your low slash gives you tons of ulti regen. It reduces the cost of their damage done. So that's also something you want to keep up. Now as far as wards, I mainly spam my, my stam one. Occasionally if I need to do a big heal, if you get low health, sometimes it's more worth it to hit obsidian shield first. You get 12k absorption for a shield so you'll be protected for a while but more importantly it gives you that major mending so you can then hit green blood and heal for a lot more use your range taunt if you need to pull like if you need to aggro people that can't be pulled but otherwise pull them or have your set pull them swarm mother should be throwing in everybody to or towards you and then our wall of elements should be immobilizing everybody that's near you for the majority of the time use your dragonite ulti but if you're in a pickle and you're starting to die you got a 57k shield here on this front ulti so use it when you need it now this is not a damage dealer so we're not going to do our normal damage test but i do need an enemy to attack me and this little doucher is not going to do that so we are going to visit our little friend in Daggerfall. So guys, I've taken some damage. Obsidian Shield, Green Blood, 15k, 7k, 2k, and my magic is gone. That's why Green Blood's not too great. Now, I'm going to keep up my buffs, including this thing. I don't do damage, I don't need it, but I'm acting as if I'm in a group. So, we are going to aggro the boss. Keep our buffs up. Let's keep the debuffs on him. Okay, so I just heavy attacked. You see that little orange glow on him? That's our main set. So if I heavy attack, that big explosion, that's our main set. And that can actually do some good amount of damage, especially when he's fully debuffed. So it's already on him again. So I'm going to heavy attack here. It's hard to see the numbers, we'll do it on the next try. But keep your buffs up, use your potions when you need to. I'm not even blocking on this dude, but in main content, you should be. So let's hope he attacks me here soon. There we go, let's see. 8k, and I didn't even have the crusher on him. Now, I mean, we are a tank, that's not, imp that's not impressive for normal DPS. But, unless you're a weird bash build tank, that's pretty good for what we can do. Yeah, 8.5k there, when, and that was not even a crit. But here's the thing, that's actually an AoE that's a pretty decent size, and you can get this to proc quite often. So, we can even do this. I didn't even have the major breach on him. So there, there's a lot of flexibility with this build. 
We can pull in enemies if we want. 9k, 9.7k there with our little increased damage since we're in our ulti there. Depending on what content you guys are doing, you might swap out some different skills. You may not even want two wards. Some people, a lot of people don't actually like using wards. I love them. My main Dragonite tank actually uses three. So I get a little excessive with my wards because I prefer to use them than blocking. If this was to be filled with tons of ads, we could be pulling in tons of people with Swarm Mother. And then as we're blocking, one of them's going to get the bomb. And then very quickly we can just heavy attack and then do a giant 10k hit to everybody as a tank. We're at 55k max health and at max resists. We're not losing a lot by doing this. Whereas the bash build that I had done a couple episodes ago... I had to sacrifice some of our resist and max health so I could do damage. This is all focused on just being a tank. It's taken me a while to kill this dude, but we're actually getting somewhere since some of our hits are doing 10k. And now for the outfit. I had to put us on this little raised thing because the grass was actually getting in the way. So for our helmet, we are using the heavy ancient Daedric helm. For the breastplate, we are using the Heavy and Neliarch's Chosen Curse. For the shoulders, we are using the Heavy Crimson Oath. For the hands, we are using the Heavy Meridian Gauntlets. For the waist, we are using the Medium Night Hollow Belt. For the legs, we are using Heavy Scale Collar Greaves. For the feet, we are using Heavy Greymore. For the axe, we are using Stormlord. For the shield, we are using Assassin's League shield. And for the staff, we are using Greymore. For the main black that we use across the whole body, we are using Cold Harbor Ash Black. For the dark black on the shield, we are using Void Pitch. And then for the red on the handprint, we are using Scintillating Scarlet. You guys can look at the color slots I used. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. This was a little bit more of a normal build, just with a weird-ish set. It was nice that it can actually work with making a normal build, so that way we can be tanky but do a bit of damage and apply burning to everybody, so you should have a lot of mag recovery from that. Like and subscribe if you guys want to see more of this content. If there's any other set that you guys would like me to check out, please leave it down in the comments and I'll be sure to check it out for one of my next upcoming videos. I will see you guys next time.